um, a little bit about me is that I've been working for New School for eight years um, and very closely with Daniela Deutsch. So um, towards the end of this session, we're going to go ahead and do a question and answer. So if you all have questions um, about, you know, how to apply to New School or what kind of documents you would need, things like that. Um, I can answer those and then Daniela can also answer any questions that you have remaining, um, you know, about portfolios or architecture related questions. I don't want to take up too much time. Uh, I know you guys are here to hear, you're here to hear about architecture. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, introduce Daniela Deutsch. She, like I said, is the chair of our architecture programs and she's the one that's going to be presenting the information today. Welcome, Daniela, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, welcome all, and um, thanks for joining. I'm Daniela Deutsch, again, Head of Architecture at New School, uh, also a full-time professor teaching a variety of classes, particularly design studio. Uh, I'm gonna start the presentation. I'm gonna share my screen. Oh, um, it is, Stephanie, it's disabled the sharing. Is something you can fix? It says that host disabled screen sharing. Sorry about this. Thanks for uh, waiting with us here. Yes, can you, um, Daniela, talk a little bit about, you know, how you ended up at New School and what your journey is while I yes. um, see if I can while, enable while we... your sharing? Absolutely, and um, maybe it's a good opportunity to to talk a bit loosely before uh, just throwing images at you. So um, I am um, an architect and a professor. So uh, also I'm international. I came initially uh, from Romania to Germany, from Germany to the US. Uh, I've studied architecture completely in Germany. So professionally, I am more German, uh, culturally, I'm more Romanian but I work well with international students for that reason. Uh, basically, um, I came here 20 years ago working in Philadelphia as an architect. I moved to San Diego working as an architect and then started teaching about 18 years ago. So um, coming to San Diego was a great experience for me because you know it's Southern California. Uh, it, it's just fantastic to work here, to live here. And uh, very quickly into my first two years uh, working as an architect, I, I got offered to teach part time and, you know, I was hooked. So, again, uh, me as Stephanie, too, most of us are here for at least 20 years implanted into the community. It's a great community. It's not just great weather. It's a great place to be. And uh, New School is growing. We've been here 40 years and we just now are are becoming more international, more global. Uh, we really know everybody in town and do a lot of local projects. So super exciting stuff. And obviously collaborate with most of the local architects, experts, and city planners. Uh, let's see if okay, it's now. Okay, you're all good. Um, you're ready to, to present. Thank it should be undisabled. Yes, thank you so much. I will try again like this, like yesterday. Let's see if this is working. Do you see this? So again, yes. uh, there's something guys with my thing here. So basically I, you will see the slides on the left, but that's fine. So um, a little bit of an intro here uh, about me. Wait, wait, let me go like this. About me already learned, this is just a little picture. But I am a head of architecture for two years now and taught at New School for 12 and lived in San Diego for 18. Um, I do teach a lot and that's one of the things we are all proud of here. Chairs and non-chairs, we, we teach a lot of classes. This is a teaching university. Um, our mission as a reminder in case you don't, you haven't heard it yet, it really it's all about you. It's about people like you that are design-minded learners that, that believe in design. This is not a typical student, yeah? Um, it's There's something special about design-minded people and we really understand that. And it is about nurturing that because this is not a formula. No matter how much talent you have, 
this needs to be nurtured. Yeah, like if you think in the medieval times where all artists had all these maestros and masters, to it is it's a very important connection between you and your design professor. Um, so that's why again we rooted in design thinking. Uh, on the same time totally focus on preparation for practice. Another thing New School is proud of is most our students are immediately working in the industry, literally most of 90% often. Uh, some of them just go to other countries, but there's almost no exceptions where people don't get a job after they graduate. And we prepare them for that. We do a lot of project-based learning, means they're real projects, uh, even if they're not real, uh, they're 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 uh, you know metaphorically real, but in the um, in the kind of upper division classes, they are all real projects with the community and uh, local stakeholders. We do have a bachelor and a master program. I'm going to show you about it in a minute. This is just again what I said before in in more bullet pointed um, way, but uh, it's ad adding the fact that. Uh, we have also industry professional faculty. Most of our faculty are real architects working in the industry. Many of them award winning. Another thing here, you have the dedicated studio space. Again, there, there's something great about California, additionally to the weather, is space, yeah? And uh, at this point, even though we also get more compacted, this school has space and you have a pretty large studios with pretty large uh, desks to work on. And that's pretty fantastic too. And we are NAB accredited. In fact, will be the only accredited architectural program in San Diego starting 2024. A little bit of an overview on our degrees. Uh, again, as mentioned before, we have a Bachelor of Architecture um, and a Bachelor of Arts in Architecture. The Bachelor of Architecture is the typical program that the majority of the students take. There's something about this classic way of studying five years, just architecture. You go through the foundations and then the advance. All the steps are very well chained and its experience is great. Um, and also nationally speaking with a five-year accredited degree, you can immediately start your licensure process. But there are other ways. So again, Bachelor of Arts is a four-year degree is not accredited, but because you add something to it, yeah, you can do a four year and then go study something else. You can do a four year and do a four plus two at new school, uh, for example, as an IPAL program uh, or other such things. And going next, I'm going to connect it further to this slide. Master of Architecture, yeah, for depending how you study, there is a path for you at new school, yeah. For example, if you would do a five year, uh, you can immediately go in practice and get licensed and do your exams. But you can also do a five plus one, which is the last one here. So with a bachelor um, in architecture, uh, basically an accredited bachelor, uh, in a year you get the master of science in architecture. You can do it all at new school. But we also have an IPAL track, which means that it's accelerating your path. Um, you know, to licensure. So there's lots of ways you can ask me more questions about this. Important is, you know, you can have two kinds of a bachelor, four kinds of master, depending on your transcripts and of, on your interests. And again, keep the questions or raise your hand if you have questions during these presentations. Um, very quickly about our curriculum. Again, just a reminder, we really are a school of architecture. Yeah, it's about what an architect is and you know an architect is generally an orchestrator and um, we need to know a little bit of everything in this particular case curricularly we we learn design for sure and our building design but we need to know data and technology community engagement human welfare environmental empathy those are four very, very important pillars we know way more than that but it's always a an, an, an mix of issues that give you that, that elevated architectural depth that is, um, yeah, it's rooted in this idea that architects will always orchestrate the, the issue, the project, the community, the consultants, yeah. We have integrative studies. What's great about this, it's not just about you knowing the basics like 
you know, physics, mathematics, humanities, but it goes deeper into upper division classes where the integrative studies program, which is a non-degree but real program within school, gives you the opportunity of transdisciplinary complex projects. Like let's say you do a project uh, for a wetland like we did, we're gonna work with biologists and environmentalists and oceanographists. And we have all these here to be able to, to meet those complexities. Uh, we also have concentrations. I'm gonna tell you about it in a minute. They give you an opportunity to focus on certain very important relevant direction in this profession. So this will be added to your diploma. So basically you have, are an architect with an expertise in something else. That's why concentration. Pedagogical focuses are basically uh, just general, like you would expect. We have a foundation focus, the core and an advance. Uh, they are all really wrapped around this idea that when you are a young student in the foundation parts, uh, you really need to be introduced properly with what, to what architecture is about, yeah? Uh, culture and study of architecture in general, what are the methods and techniques uh, and skills, yeah? You need to know to practice architecture as a contemporary discipline. And then uh, core goes into mostly third year where you, depending if you're a transfer student or not, you can also have started here. In that core, you get this uh, a bit of a more depth on getting ready for advanced projects. Yeah, like how do you communicate? How do you mix uh, theory with design, with technology and practice? So you finally all the pieces core together in the core and kind of smaller, specially dedicated projects for it. And then in advance, you are ready to do like real projects in the industry. By real projects, I mean, and this is fourth and fifth year for us, I mean, not projects that you immediately build, but they are real because not as a building, they are real as a project, yeah? Meaning uh, the mayor is looking for solutions, the community, the city planning department, or a developer. All these people talk to us as academics, and we, we usually start these processes, students and faculty, and when we finish those projects, they can finally start the real project uh, with our research and initial ideas for what the design can be. So you listening to this, this is extremely powerful that we offer this to our students, yeah, because you learn how to be an architect and often touch projects that nobody has touched before and work directly with the city planning department, you know. So um, research space, I bring it in here because even though we are a teaching university, we obviously do a lot of research. You cannot be an accredited school in anything without asking what's the next question, uh, what has been done before. And this is basically what research is about. We also call it research by practice because it's not just reading about theory of architecture, which is the typical PhD in architecture, but it's about reading about Again, latest development, sometimes we read PhD articles in order to develop a project that's the latest possible in the industry. And um, as you can see here, really, we need to establish a balance between teaching, research, and practice. Now, like I believe any good school should do, no matter what, if it's teaching or research school, it's still an academic environment, yeah. And uh, I wanted to make this point because we do that. We do all the practice, but we also base this on very clear research focuses. Uh, and we want to offer you a place for dialogue and mutual support. That's obviously, it's all around the students' well-being and space to learn fast and relevant issues. Uh, those are the two uh, concentration. That's the first one that we offer right now. They're very big umbrella. You will see one is sustainable design. The other one is urban design. Uh, but we also mix them with this other word. In this case, this sustainable design and technology and then urban design and development. Uh, in the sustainable design technology, it's obvious. Yeah, you learn about sustainable design, but not just. So you really learn from, from some of the leaders in the industry and the latest developments, literally. So people that were hired to teach the depths of this concentration, which has many different classes, uh, are 
current energy analysts working with architects and building the most efficient buildings in the country. Uh, technologies related to software uh, and other such thing like, um, you know, energy measuring techniques and uh, again, latest uh, tools uh, to become a true sustainability expert. Uh, and as you can see here, architects are never just doing the same thing. There are many architects today that go into consultancies for sustainability as architects, but they become an expert in that or work with energy analysts or lead and well accredited professionals, which are, you know, accreditation entities, uh, you know, for architects. You can have a lead accredited building or a well accredited building and many such similar things. So it's a reminder that you can study a variety of things but, and you can also become a variety of things. And that's that's the beauty of this profession. It's, it's not formulaic. Uh, you can be what you want to be within it. And we are equipped to, to work with you one by one and identify who you want to be and who you should best be. And then urban design and development, obviously, another kind of big umbrella. There are also schools that just teach urban design or just planning, but they are usually not architectural. So you really deal with a big scale and a lot of civic plan, you know, civic engineering issues. And it's becoming very, um, uh, you know, very mathematical and it's all about streets and bridges and, you know, and uh, that's the thing that uh, we're trying to bridge, yeah, here between being an architect, but being able to to become a bit of an expert in urban design, because in a large firm, for example, you always have a few architects that can understand that large scale of a city planning processes, yeah? And that's something super important, obviously, because you never just design a building. Often you design mini D streets and uh, the context matters immensely um, in an urban environment. And additionally to learning this from the experts, we have development in um, California, in case you don't know, architects as developers are very, very unique here. And uh, we, we have a bit of a tradition in this city for it, particularly in San Diego, in fact. And um, a thing about this idea of you as an architect, uh, start the development process. It's it's a lot of business related activities and management, but that's what you learn here. And you are able to say, hey, I like this, this site. I, I'm going to know how to work uh, with the banks and the industry. And I'm going to be the one developing the site, which the advantage is pretty clear. You are your own client and you, you can really do all the right things that sometimes working for a client, it's harder to do, but you also learn how to do that here, meaning uh, how to deal with the community, how to deal with the energy efficient features of the buildings. So there's a lot of strengths in ar architects as, as developer, very unique, not for everybody, but we do it. And here again, you go a bit into this direction uh, as a developer, as a city planner, as an environmental impact advocate which is more related to larger areas within the city. So I'm gonna now show you a few images uh, throughout the studios, it's just money shots. But uh, before I do that, any questions? We're good? Okay. So uh, quick images here. Uh, here you see an example of a fourth year studio. This is undergrad, upper division. This is Amina Spandiari. He's also teaching, uh, besides studio, most of our software classes, Rhino, Revit, and similar. And um, in this class, th those are large classes. This particular picture is a project in Portland. Uh, we had about 70 or so students. It's maybe four years ago, five years ago even. And uh, that's an example where we work with a developer in Portland. You can see here in the middle up. A um, very large site uh, across the Villamette River, which is by downtown Portland. Right across, you have this large central east side community that was an industrial area. And those are communities that now in from industrial become urban. Yeah, so very interesting 
current thing in all over the world, in fact, where the, the big cities are eating the industrial areas by the cities now. So that's a fantastic project because of this and its relevance um, in general. Uh, it has 10 large size. The developer came to us to come up with ideas and we worked on this for about uh, 30 weeks, yeah, I would say. And uh, went many times to Portland, presented to the community and to the owners. A very interesting process, obviously. And again, very, very real project. Uh, not to build by us, but all the ideas that we gave and had exhibitions in Portland, all these are now with the developer and he's using these to, uh, to find better solution for this area. And this is not about service here, it's about everybody benefits. Students learn, the communities helped, and we just do projects that help communities. Yeah, we don't just do projects to make a developer rich. That's not what we're interested in, no. Uh, that's just an image uh, with me just for fun, but this is uh, the same studio and you see a little bit in the background, you have these very large spaces that feel like architectural offices and, you know, people trickle from the industry. We are there and talk to each other and we really get you ready to work like this on large projects in the real world. Uh, a few other image, I'm just going to show you today uh, renderings. But obviously all these are um, associated to very complex floor plans and sections and other calculations. This is a project that you can see looks pretty unique, uh, but it was supposed to be unique per definition. It's a wetland education and research center uh, in a local uh, area, Mission Bay in San Diego. Uh, this was a collaboration with UCSD Natural Reserve System. This is an area that is protected by UCSD, literally belongs to UCSD, and it's part of a large, large network on Southern California coast up to San Francisco. So that's another environmentally super real project. So here the, the students initially really do landscape design, understanding a very, very complex uh, kind of ecological uh, network of wetlands and other such things that are not touched yet or not destroyed yet by the cities and they are being officially protected but despite uh, the cities eating them alive yeah because it's growing around them with a lot of uh, uh, you know um, um, toxicity and all of the people stuff that cities produce and uh, there's a very very fine line in how to work with municipalities to protect these, these, uh, yeah, these natural habitats. And habitats, because just to see why this is important, first of all, those are few areas that were never touched by men, and this is so rare today in, 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 in urban areas. Second of all, uh, there are lots of issues that produce because of these wetlands. They cannot produce anywhere else. So the San Diego is known for birds. We have I think at some point we had the most diverse uh, bird uh, 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 types, I don't have the word now, in the entire country, it was in San Diego, in fact. And uh, there's many other species there, but, but knowing that, uh, it's pretty amazing to know that if you kill this habitat, uh, any of these species will die. It's pretty insane, no? So... Um, and again, an iconic project. They wanted something unique. This one is very organic. We had other solutions, but this is one that the client liked the most. And you never know what the client likes and we're ready for anything. Here you see the opposite is National City downtown. We worked on Fort Floyd, the National City Mayor and City Council. Uh, 40 blocks is a large number. I think we had 75 students though. And uh, again, 30 weeks. But see, this is a poorer community. This, this is a new downtown for them. It's very rare that you get to wrap your head around as a student on developing an entire downtown. But there's California for you. If I go to Europe, there's nothing like this. I barely have a little site like that, no? Or something that I refurbish. But here, you can develop an entire downtown because that's what they are doing, which is pretty incredible. But you can see this is not about iconicism here. It's about real projects for, for a more community in need. 
and very complex program. I'm going to go faster now. I just want you to get a feel of that. That's that's kind of an interior shot of these with new alternative uh, living solutions. So again, we develop very, very distinct housing solutions for this particular community. Th those are just the exterior images. But uh, we go deep and present to the communities and um, ultimately are actually in local newspapers. This is a project in Seattle, just a money shot for that. Uh, it was a wellness center uh, on the Seattle waterfront, a project in Portland, which was three connected blocks. You can see that's why it's so long of uh, mostly the office, but it's it was a post-COVID office of the future type vision. Uh, this is in San Diego for a civic center. It's more of a kind of stylized image, but uh, it's it's an example of, you know, I just picked images I thought look compelling, an example of um, how you can play with uh, renderings and personalize your representation style. Uh, this is a, also a four tier for um, a small, a shorter projects, but this was an area by the border with Tijuana uh, for very compacted uh, housing solutions. Uh, this is again Portland over the three blocks. Again, very close, very difficult site. You can see on the lower left this highway raging behind it. So this was the site that City of Portland didn't want to didn't want to touch somehow. Yeah, and we gave them initial solutions for it. So again, very inspiring for us to to show them that the students can do that when the architects didn't want to touch it. And it's not a joke. Here we have again Seattle. This is I just picked this again. Some of them are very organic. I want you to see the mix of the, depending on the client and the situation, and uh, you know um, other constraints. The student has the freedom to really express uh, his his personality as a designer. Now again, depending on the project, but in the end, everything goes if you if 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 you do if you do it right. And that's what they learn from us. We don't tell them what to design. We tell them, yeah, this idea is great, but that's kind of the path to make it viable. Yeah. And that's what we, again, uh, are doing as teacher. We're not creating mini miss. We're creating maxi use. <laughs> and then here again, Portland, you can see the uniqueness of these, these solutions. Yes, super viable, but one looks like a glass house. The other one looks like a you know, futuristic uh, organic type uh, form, but they work because they are all hitting the criteria programmatically and urbanistically. Uh, this is a project in at UCSD for a future interdisciplinary research center. All of these with the real entities and real projects, uh, real clients. Uh, San, Civic Center San Diego, again, that's unique, unexpected, but viable, yeah? And the students learn how to express something that uh, you know, everybody will do just a box in the city. Well, we won't. <laughs> uh, this is part of the wetland again. You can see how this building is connected towards us. It's because this, this particular student did not just develop uh, the building for the wetland center, but, but created an entire structure that's part of a, a water purification park because again, that's one of the things that this area needs. Yeah, that's that's highly toxic right now. Um, again, another solution for a project in Portland, you can see the beautiful plazas and again, very difficult urban condition here next to that big highway. Another one in Seattle um, where the students could do almost anything because it's one of these sites. The only things you couldn't do, it's a jail or a storage facility. You could do anything else. So the, I showed you before, you know, this one, that's a wellness center. And now that's a solution for this that is kind of a marine institute by the water with student housing uh, elements here. Super fun stuff to do this project with the office on the waterfront. I'll show you a picture in a minute. Um, and then again, some interior images for that. Uh, again, the water, Kendall Frost, which is in fact the name of the wetland that I just uh, talked to you about earlier. And an image for another civic center solution in San Diego. So I'm gonna go to just a few images from fifth year and then we'll end up in a few minutes. This is a fifth year project. Uh, this is about 
uh, affordable housing solution in an area here called Hillcrest, very, you know, very important area next to downtown, um, very young area, fun area. So again, we need this is this is an, an a district that that really looks into the future where you come with very unique solutions uh, to express who you are. The whole district is about this. Um, and um, that's a cool one by, by the I-5, uh, an impossible site belonging to the Navy. In fact, the project is called Navy OTC, which is Navy Old Town uh, Center. The old town is right next to this. And uh, right now there are just some, some really gray uh, Navy related um, kind of storage buildings where this could become um, a mini master plan for kind of mixed use mini district. So in this particular way, this is a transportation hub for the city. And you can see it's a little bit futuristic, but it has all the elements necessary. Here on the left is the transportation hub. And then you have these, these uh, middle plaza connecting all these mixed use elements. Uh, which is literally commercial office and living. It's just a kind of a night nice vision of that. I thought it looks really cool. So again, it's all about you having the freedom to express yourself, but also uh, you ending up with solutions that are literally buildable. Uh, that's just a few images uh, from the process. This is right before COVID in Seattle. We are here going from up there, you see it's going up down to the waterfront. If you ever been to Seattle, they have this central promenade, uh, which is called the central waterfront. And that's the director of the office of the waterfront. And we work with them on these visions. This is at new school here. I would say two weeks before COVID. And uh, here we have Wingman and Michelle, um, you know, doing this kind of what we call the CIA walls to, to workshop and charrette the initial steps of these very complex urban projects. Uh, then, you know, process, um, pin up presentations, uh, uh, always presenting to the community and the client. Uh, this is from National City. I like this image because um, you can see how students really own this presentation and uh, they also have really cool audience and they know that. Uh, yeah, here you have Philip Molnar in the middle uh, with the lighter shirt. He is the, he leads the uh, architectural and development uh, part of the San Diego Union Tribune, which is our local newspaper. Uh, Brett Tulis, which is one of the principals in one of the biggest offices in the city. And the students learn till the end that they not just present this to us, they present this to, to real experts and important people in the community. Uh, here you have uh, in the middle a structural engineer working with the students here on the right. And on the left is one of the professors that's in fact a very a great designer for Mil Miller Hall Architecture in San Diego. Uh, here you have Karen Lineado, a student that's now obviously an alumni, but you see an example of what a student can do. And she became now, she leads design and in the meantime has her own company in San Francisco. Uh, again, just some images through the process. Uh, you can see how we, we went that far with, with the boards in the process to, to pin them up next to the natural reserve that we are trying to save. So really, really great project. Here on the right is a student. On the left, on the middle, it's one of the professor, Tom Mulica. Again, also licensed architect in the city. Uh, here you see again these walls initially where we work with this game of cards that I call urban vocabulary cards. And uh, it's a way to help you speed up uh, the understanding of all the complex uh, uh, way to define and, and design a city. And these cards have a way to show you, to prompt you into a major issue. And then underneath you have uh, a strategy, for, different strategies for that urban issue. 
Uh, now I go quickly into second year just to see what we do in foundation. Yeah, like bigger models and understanding space and understanding how to draw, uh, but other complex issues. This is a bit abstract for second year. This particular project was about a, a music facility and the students had to, each of them had another song and created a collage inspired by the song. Yeah. So, you know, crazy things like this, and it's becoming very cinematic. So in the in the foundation, you already learn to be abstract and deep and really embrace uh, uh, not just uh, the technical parts of architecture, but the, you know, the poetic and artistic parts of it. And you need to understand this from the foundation times now. And we go deep to you there and which gets you super excited for advanced studies now. So I'm gonna leave it to that. Um, it's just a little glimpse in what we do. And those are not the technical parts, but the, the final parts. But thank you for listening. And let me know if you have any questions. I can open the floor. Um, feel free to put in the chat if you have any questions. Um, also, if you have any admissions questions, um, please feel free to reach out. I will be sending you all uh, a link to this recording in case, in case you wanna go back and, and review it. Um, but also feel free to respond to that email if your questions aren't ready at this moment. Looks like we do have a question. Yes, I see. Oh, it's the same question twice? Yes, okay. Um, let me, let me read it one more time. It's just because, okay. one second. It says, can you please throw some light on the entrepreneurial connections that New School provides for the students for the ever rigorous competition in the business world? I love that question. So, um, first of all, generally we prep you for that in no matter what the classes are. Yeah, but now in fourth year, we have a class that's called, uh, we have it also in the master program. Um, it's in the fourth year, it's called, in undergraduate, it's called architectural practice. And in the graduate, it's called professional practice. In the end, it's the same thing, taught slightly different for undergrads or grads. So uh, something that I'm very excited about, we brought about three years ago, a new professor from the industry for architecture practice in the undergrad program. And it was because of that, that you're saying, we always taught that in some form, but now uh, this guy was, Rich Mitchell was um, um, AIA president in Portland and, uh, you know, architectural firm principal and, uh, just had this incredible affinity, not just to be a leader, but to teach uh, architectural practice. And we've done this from three, three years and we're growing the focus on it. One of the things is this year, uh, we have workshops to show students in this class and it's a long class. This is a three quarter class, yeah? Show them how to open their own firm uh, and how to become entrepreneurial. That's exactly what we teach. And this is a required class too. Uh, we even have the students create their own kind of uh, um, firm, so to speak, in teams and mimic the process a little bit in the initial stages. But in the class, despite that little kind of workshop series, we just teach that contracts, working for clients, um, everything that a principal in a firm would do. And we know for a fact that that we went way deeper to that than anyone else that I know. And I studied in Germany. So this is something unique we offer. And again, as I mentioned at the beginning, practice in architecture uh, and getting you ready for practice is maybe number one things we proud ourselves with. I hope this helped, but let me know if you wanna go deeper in examples of that. Sounds like um, <laughs> that was a great answer. Anyhow, Daniela is also available um, on our website. Her email is um, available there and I will provide it in the email that I'm going to send you. 
Uh, if we have no more questions, again, thank you for joining us. And uh, we, we hope that you're able to come visit us soon. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Daniela. Thank you. Bye, everyone. And bye, bye. 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 Bye.